to call you. Thank you. I love to call you in the room um, and see what you have to say. The question is, um, tell us about, do you have a healthy relationship with social media? I just busted myself out and said, no, especially when I'm stressed and I really um, need to kind of escape, right? So here we go. Daniel Lopez says, yes, but I'm too busy with raising kids to be on much, right? And then Jessica, if you want to speak, my friend, you say yes, because I'm okay not checking it every day. You are a champion. Go ahead, Jessica. I, although I do have to say, I, I think it's all unhealthy. <laughs> I know it can be used for good, but I, I think it's sucking all of our brains and our, our social capabilities. I think it's evil overall, but. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a perspective too, right? It is true for some of us. Emily. Would you like to make your comment, my friend, in the room? Uh, sure. I just said that it helped to have fewer platforms and find one that I liked. But even that one, I notice I uh, just scroll through purposely, <laughs> like purposeless scrolling yeah. instead of using it for connection. Right. Thank you for being so honest. Anyone else? I see someone else in the chat box. Monica, what's coming up for you, my friend? <laughs> You're like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I basically say the same thing, like don't get on it, but then I end up being on it. Yeah. Um, sometimes right. more, more, more longer than others, you know, other days. Yeah, right. You all, for us as adults, when I say social media platforms, I'm talking about anything that pops up on here. It could even be for us as adults, our emails, our calendars, that amazing, horrible Pinterest, um, Kaiser, where you're just looking at your test results 50 million times, right? Things that come through this that actually we are so frustrated at times with the young people we're raising about it, but we actually may have got sucked in a little bit. Research says 10 to 12 years ago is only when these smartphones came about. And one of the reasons we start this chat blast with us as parents and guardians is because we have to be honest about where we lie in this in order to also know what's healthy and unhealthy or what we're doing with our kids. And so some of us, okay, this is the keep it real moment. You guys ready? The way you're going to respond to this keep it real is you're going to raise your hand or put an emoji up if it relates to you. All right, you ready? Let's try this. Ready? You put a thumbs up emoji or hand. Okay, if you can. Annie, not you, you're driving, my friend. Just shake your head, okay? All right, I'm so the keep it real is. I'm actually sitting in a car, so I'm okay. <laughs> okay, good, thank you, thank you. All right, here's the keep it real for us as parents. During COVID, did you get online with social media and platforms more than usual? Do you, as a parent, monitor your time on your phone um, during the week? Thank you, Cecilia. Did you, as a parent or a guardian or a human, sometimes turn to this phone more than you turn to actual humans to relax, to de-stress, and even to socialize? Right. All right, here's the real keep it real. Do you sometimes feel like your fingers or your thumbs don't have anything to do because you're not fidgeting with your phone, texting, working or something like that? You have a physical reaction sometimes to not having this in your hand. Thank you, Veronica. Veronica said, no, I got this. Thank you. <laughs> right. The reason why anyone else have a curious question, we call these curious questions. Have you ever had a social media account tell you it's time to go to bed, you've been on too long? Oh, oh, really? I only thought it was Franklin. So my husband, he would tell this if he was here. He is on TikTok because he monitors all the kids, but then he got caught up and one night TikTok told him it's time to go to bed. Did, right. 
can we get Cantonese translation in the chat box, please? I'd love to um, take you off mute, whomever, and can you just share what's coming up for you or these questions, what's making you think or contemplate? Same thing. Okay. I see some hands raised, but I think that's only for the yes or no. Okay. Is this hidden home for us, you all? Now let's talk about our kids. So one of the things when we talk about um, social media and our kids, and what we wanted to do with this session is we wanted to take a moment to, and let me pause for the chat box translation. Um, Nelly says, not social media, but I do spend way too much time playing solitary. Mm -hmm. Anyone else out there? Those little games, right? And that's kind of a, a way we also de-stress the pressure from our brain, right? It's something that's just like that. Great, thank you, Nelly. Great. What we wanna do tonight is I wanna just take a moment for us to have a conversation. We're gonna watch a video and to share some things that we are finding in our research um, as parents, but just even professional around social media. I want to first say that this is not an exhaustive conversation, that we can have this conversation over and over again, because there are constantly new things coming up for our children, for the kids we are with, for us as adults. It is an ever-evolving situation and different platforms. And even for us as adults, when we talk about social media, phones, um, excuse me, smartphones, electronics, technology, it's different for all of us. And so tonight when you see these pictures, and I, I love to hear you guys, when you see these pictures of these youngins, we'll call our youngins tonight, what's coming up from you just by looking at this picture? What's coming up in your mind and your heart and your body? You can come off mute at any time. And which picture is popping up for you? The so one, um, go ahead, Nelly. In the middle, the bottom, the, bo the bottom picture in the middle, sitting in the bed. Um, I feel like kids are out of control right now. <laughs> I mean, this day. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you have seen that in your house sometimes, where your kid or a guardian they're in the bed, right? And that picture kind of shows the shadow, and the light, like they're in two spaces at once, maybe. Daniel, what did you want to say, my friend? Or Nelly, I think I saw you come off too. Uh, I was going to say, it, it look, any of those kids could be my son. I mean, oh. he's he's even installed some games on my phone because um, he's that much um, quick and knowledgeable than I am. Right. Right. Anyone can relate to Nelly? Can I say something? Um, uh, yeah. I want to um, translate uh, 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 per, a parent put uh, Chinese in there in the chat. Thank you, Danny. Um, Thank you. She, he was saying that um, the translation wasn't clear. It was ha happened last night as well. I don't know which uh, meeting that he was at, but right now he couldn't even hear the translation. Okay, Annie, can you ask him? Is he in the? Or you can hear me, sir. Is he in the translation room? Okay, let me ask him. Um, Uh, where is he right now? Hmm. I think did he he left? I think. Okay. There, there is a. She said that uh, can hear and one person can't hear, so someone's having trouble accessing it. But yeah. she is in the room. He oh. is. Oh, I don't see him. Uh, maybe he changes. Uh, okay. Or, or maybe he can come in and come back, come out and come back in. So, Miss Annie, is it possible if we see him come back in, you can help me support him getting back in the translation room? Sure, if I see him, but I don't see him in the room. Maybe it's just uh, my phone. Yeah, I actually know who you're referencing. So if I see him come in, we'll we'll pause for a minute. Yeah, we'll look for him. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Annie. Great. And was there someone who had a comment? I think we were about to have a comment about what picture sticks out for you and what's coming up for you. Emily, go ahead, my friend. The lower left picture just sticks out um it's like such a contrast to my 
childhood. <laughs> um, and yeah, I wrote, it makes me wish they could like just play in nature. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else, which one is coming up for you or sticking out and why? You know, just the posture and like, I, I feel like I see this with adults all the time too with phones of just like this, like the neck down. Yeah. Uh, there's like this, it just, they seem so isolated and the rest of the world is not even happening. They're just like glued. Right, right. And if you, all of us know when our youngins are like this, sometimes they don't even hear you, even if they don't have headphones on. They're literally in another space. And even some of us as adults and Jessica, you bring up, I actually happened to be on the phone with the pediatrician with one of my kids today who was having an arm injury. And the pediatrician said, uh, virtual, show me how you hold your phone when you text. And literally the pediatrician was assessing an injury on my son that she felt was associated to how he holds his phone and how he uses his thumb to text and his posture. And so you bring up a great thing, Jessica, that we don't talk about is social media is not just about what people are seeing, but what they're holding, how they're holding it and their posture around it. And it is beginning to affect children differently than us because we didn't have this, right? Yeah. Great. What I wanna do you all is tonight we were gonna have our children on, but they are all in sports program and actually on a play date. What I realized is one of the ways we combat social media is to let them play when they have opportunity. But when we sat around the table and interviewed all of our children, and I'll go ahead and show you some questions later and a little bit of research. One of the things they said that I wanted us to hear, and we're going to watch a video together that can also be translated in the translation rooms, was that it's not all bad. Here's the thing, my friends. We Last week or whenever we met again, we jumped into the all bad. But now I want us to show a video a little bit of how we as parents and guardians can go ahead and redefine what this means for our children and our family if we pivot a few things of how we interact with social media and also the rules and boundaries for our children. Yang Ling, I believe I'm saying, I hope I saying your name right. If you, anyone there wants to go into the chat room, the interpretation room, we do have interpretation for anyone on the call who would like interpretation in English and Cantonese. Great. All right, how do you guys feel about watching a couple minute video? You ready to roll with me? You still out there? Hello. Sounds good. Sounds good, good. Thank you for your voice. It's been a long day. I love hearing your guys' voice too. All right, I'm gonna share with you all a video called The Problem with Parents, Kids, and Social Media. Um, we're just gonna watch it for a minute and then let's have some dialogue around it. Um, again, this correlates a little bit with what our children were saying in my home, but also with what some experts are saying about not just seeing it as all bad, but as an opportunity to pivot with our youngins. Here we go. For my translators, if you need me to pause the video for translation, please go ahead and just um, let me know in the chat box and we will pause. So much of parents' fear of social media use comes from this fear that their kids' lives will be ruined forever. And we see that a lot of times online where people make poor decisions and then their lives are affected in pretty dramatic ways. But I think it's important to step back with kids and help them understand how can you be more intentional about how you're spending your time online and how can you align those with your values? The smartphone was only really released about 10 or 12 years ago. So all of these apps are new for parents as well. Kids are going through some treacherous terrain when it comes to technology and social media use. But we also need to understand that they're using technology for some positive things, learning, understanding, communicating. So when we do that, we become more open 
to helping kids in an objective way that protects them from some of the detrimental training and dangerous things that may happen online or in real life. So where do I start? What do I do? The first is this idea of developing awareness. Learn what apps your kids are using. Learn how to use them. Download them on your phone. And then you can come from a framework that's more objective rather than coming from a place of fear and telling kids they can never use something. The second thing is creating opportunities for daily and weekly digital detox. Taking kids' phones and devices away at night can be a really easy way to do this. And a lot of times kids will tell me, I don't want to tell my parents this. I'm really grateful that they take my phone away at night because then I can tell my friends I'm not available after a certain hour. Otherwise, it becomes this feeling of always online, always having to react. And kids don't want that either, but they don't really know how to effectively self-regulate. And the third thing is helping kids figure out their why. Why you're reaching for your phone or why you're posting or why you're taking so many photos when you're with friends. The idea is really to help kids identify and understand what is energizing for them and what is draining. They have a choice in how they spend their time online. They can opt into experiences and opt out. And that's a really empowering message. And once they're given permission and understanding that they have choices, they actually start making really good ones that are in line with their own personal values. Right. What came up for you there? What did you hear? How's it resonating with you? Is there something there you can apply in your family? Um, when the video mentioned that the kids cannot self-regulate and they want adults to take away their phone, I don't think it's true though, because <laughs> for my kids, they want to play you know, as much as possible or they want to see the, the, the tablet as much as possible. Even when I, it's time to go to sleep, they will, you know, be very upset when I, you know, take it away. I said, tell them that, oh, it's time to go to bed and they will be very upset. But I usually tell them ahead of time, oh, um, uh, you have to be, get ready by a certain time and no more, you know, uh, uh, tablet at a certain time. So, so I let them know ahead of time, even though they, 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 they're upset. When I tell them when the time is really there, then they will be all the most of the time they will be upset. But, but um, giving them a, a heads up that will help too. Thank you, Annie. You bring up a great point. I'm going to come back to self regulation because that was something I wanted to highlight. So, yes, and then you also bring up the point of giving them time to make the transition to not having their phones. We do that with behavior modification in school at times. And so saying, hey, at nine o'clock, I'm, t you know, we're putting our phones up. It's seven o'clock now at eight o'clock, letting them know. And then at nine o'clock, we have the phone. So you give them time as well. Thank you, Annie. That was great. Nelly, what do you have, my friend? Um, yeah, basically the same thing, except that this is even for myself, um, because I do that. I know. At return of the TV, we do everything. And then I'm like, well, I should just check the news. Well, I should just check email. Why am I checking email at 10 o'clock at night? Like, I'm not going to do anything about it, right? But I think it's just that habit. And so I'm like, okay, no, I think we definitely need to know um, our son. Okay, like, you know what you said, give him some time. Okay, Trent, you know, at six o'clock or at seven o'clock, no more iPad, no more this. But I think I need to do that for myself as well. Thank you, Nelly. And that's really honest for us because our kids, what's the old saying? They don't do what we say. They do what we do. Right. And, and what I found Nelly is sometimes you can partner with your kid where they can be your accountability partner on that mom, you know, it's time to get off your phone. It's time for bed. Oh, my kids irritate me sometimes with that, but it's, it's actually right. And then I can do it to them and we're helping each other. Yeah, what else is coming up for you all? Genji just brought up something for me just um, just this morning. My daughter's in seventh grade. 
and her little crew of friends they're on a you know a chat or whatever and she's telling me how they're she's getting texts on the chat so 11 30 at night last night on a school night and I, and I think there's like this new social pressure for kids like you can tell when your friends are going to bed when they're logging off and there's like I think a pressure for them to stay on late and to be part of that like late night chat even on a school night and right right and there is the social pressure and sometimes I tell my kids blame it on me you know like blame it on me um because they are still developing all of them skills of self-regulation and also allowing this either to affect their esteem or not and as parents we are still there to be the buffer to things that they don't yet know how to back themselves out of. And one of them sometimes is the social pressure. Um, I've even had to get on the phone with a child one time and say, my son tried to tell that child, my mother said I have to be off the phone. And the child kept going and I said, I am his mother and I am asking you to stop texting right now. And he actually needed me to do it, right? Eh, am I saying your name right, E-H, or is that a initials? You said, so easier said than done about winding down and getting off the phone. And with teenagers, the hormones make them upset. A lot of anti-torment and little accountability. Can I get some spirit fingers, anyone there feeling that? Are there any of us that have teenagers in the house right now? Ooh, first of all, just give yourself a hug, okay? Just give yourself a hug. <laughs> That's what I want to say to that, my friend. You're right. The teenagers, when we think about the different developmental age groups, elementary school, we can control them a little better, right? The middle school population, we're in a battle, but we can still win that battle. The high school group, they already think they're grown. They just need our, our credit cards, right? And so in that, here is a way I want to shift us. There's this thing called growth mindset where we look at things not from the negative or the punitive, but how we can possibly grow. And so in this part of us as parents and guardians trying to monitor our kids, one of the things the video brings up is us identifying not necessarily the behavior or the discipline part of it, but the partnership and helping them be able to regulate themselves. Social media and the phones are a place that need to be regulated for all of us. Our kids are still suffering a little bit from impulse control. Okay, maybe some of us too. That means we can't stop ourselves from the need to do this, from the need to write Jessica to see what everybody's saying in the chat and who did this. And they're just putting like, sometimes they're not saying not anything, but like fake emojis. And so if we as parents and guardians take a moment to say, how can I help my kid build one regulation, ability to regulate themselves better, two resilient strategies, which means them having the ability to bounce back from not having an, a, something that they may be getting addictive to. And then three, already trained them on a space to not have to always have so much chatter. And what that means is we sit with them. Now, here's the courageous part, y'all. You ready for this? I'm not saying some of us are scared of our children, but for some of us, it's actually easier to just let them do what they're doing. Is that right? Okay, I see head shakings. Okay, okay. And sometimes that is easier, but it's not healthier. And growth mindset and supporting our kids on this platform or this thing they will have for the rest of their life as it evolves, this is the moment to shift. So I want to hear EH initials. Can I hear your voice? Do you want to share what's coming up for you? Got some good ideas here. I don't even see. Where are you? I don't see you here. Okay. Got it, got it, great. So my friend is saying, so far waiting on reward base for being accountable, AKA off the phone, right? And so here's the thing, our kids need an immediate reward sometimes for their actions. Like 
Um, oh, I did this. Let me go to this. My son today, he finished his homework. He doesn't get on anything games until Thursday. He says, I'm done. Can I get on games? It's easier for me to allow him to get on games because he won't leave me alone. But there are moments I have to hold the line we do as parents and guardians in order to train them and teach them that there have to be boundaries and things set up to make sure that they have a healthy relationship with their social media and gaming. Does anyone have experience with that? I'm just starting to experience it now because mine are just now starting to get into all that. So my son likes to play, he got a Nintendo for his birthday and um, <laughs> I held off for so long. We did, and I'm like, oh Lord, now we're like, we wish we should have just held off some more. But you know you feel that way. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's give our friends some support. Yes. But so he's in the third grade. So we are, we have him. Okay, you can only play for an hour, you know, and that's fine. But I see the shift, and it's like you want him to be able to play because I see like that's the only time he gets to play with anybody and have some socialization. But it is like that fine line of like, okay, how much is too much, you know? that part. And then um, my daughter, she just got a phone because she goes to dance class. So we got her a phone. Um, and so I've already implemented. So every day I take her phone at night. So there's no phone overnight. There's no, and I'm going to, and now as I'm listening here, I'm like, I'm gonna keep that going. Just that's what it's yeah. going to be period in a high school, whatever you turn your phone in. Yeah. I'm glad you Sarah, was saying that because as we were doing this design, we begin, I begin to think about those of us who are already in it, right? Our middle school kids, our high school kids, they are full throttle. And some of us did it. My kids got a phone because of COVID. So I couldn't know where they were at all times. I was scared. But then there are those of you who have elementary school kids that are not yet where some of our kids are. So there is preventative and reactive. Mm -hmm. Some of us are working on preventative strategies like you, Denise, Denise, am I saying your name right? It's Denise. Denise, thank you. You've got some preventative things going on because they're just coming in that in that space. Us, some of us other ones, now we have to work on reactive strategies. We didn't know what we didn't know. We didn't know. But now we can change the narrative if it is unhealthy for our children, the kids we're raising, and ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nellie, do you want to go ahead and say what you said, my friend? Oh, yeah, I think just um from some of the conversations, I, I think I, I may try a, a token board system or reward system of, hey, if you, um, I don't know, if today you don't use your tablet or today you only play on the computer for one hour, right? Like, you know, you get a, a reward, you know, a, a check mark, and then I'll, I'll give you a reward at the end of the week. Because I think sometimes, and sometimes I do, I sometimes I do think, oh, I just let him play and then I can, you know, do house chores and whatnot. But I think I need to be more, more um, proactive, I think, and not less reactive. But I'm definitely going to try the, a reward system for either putting the tablet away when I tell him to put the tablet away or um, rewarding him for maybe not using the tablet that day. That's great, Nellie. And let me tell you why all of us that we found here is that our kids need to learn, young people, one of our responsibilities as their guardians and parents is to teach them how to move through the world and manage their life. And part of that is incentive-based. I don't know about you all, but nothing matters more to my youngins right now than those cell phones or those platforms they're on. And if we can figure out how to incentivize the use of it in a healthy way, we can use it as a, a life skill and a t way to teach them how to maneuver through the world. But if we don't start putting boundaries on those things, then the truth is, James probably knows this because he deals with all of our kids and he deals with all parents. But the truth is, if we don't teach them that as kids, they won't know how to do that as adults. And so the safest place to test out strategies and incentives is in your house with you, where they can, it's youth development, where they can try it and they can fail and they can throw a tantrum and they can get back up and try it again until it becomes a way of life. That's the beauty and the power of you all as parents and guardians. 
And so I want to share with you guys a couple other slides and you can also take pictures of if you want to just have it to look at later and it'll also be on our website, not website, the district's website. But I want to share with you a little bit of research just to again share why this is important um, for us to begin to have these, these shifts with our youngins and ourselves. So there's research from Ann and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago. They recently surveyed like 3,000 students um, and teenagers to kind of understand the pressing concerns and challenges on social media, as well as trends and behaviors that those children exhibited. And so I'm showing these to you all because while we see these, the goal for us or the, the aha hopefully for us as parents is how do we combat these? So what's listed here is what they saw is in as result of young people being on um, their phones and social media, not having a healthy balance, 58% um, of teenagers reported that they weren't sleeping enough, right? Some of us as well, that phone lights up in the middle of the night or you can't get off it, or what my friend Jessica said, they want to be pop, what's going on? Not enough physical activity. 57% of the teenagers said this. Why? Because they're, they're sitting, they're gaming, they're not playing outside. When many of us were young, the game was hide and seek, tag, or let's race each other. Not enough focus on schoolwork, 52%. One of the things at the middle school currently that our kids are out of Bancroft is I actually noticed that they have been super serious on phones. So now my child says, mommy, you cannot call or text me during school. I cannot take it out. And that is super important because 52% of teenagers are now saying they can't focus because of that phone. And so even giving your child restrictions around school. The other is an unhealthy need for approval and attention, 51%. And this is higher amongst girls. And so how do we give them the attention and the approval more because we know they're combating forces that are out of our reach, not enough FaceTime and interaction. That picture on the bottom left that we showed earlier that my friend said made her feel a certain way is that kids will sit in front of each other and be on the phone with each other, even texting each other and not looking at each other. So literally, how do we tell them? I tell my son this, sit up. Put your head up, look up. Number six, this is the hardest pill for us as parents to swallow, but we gotta be able to take this. 45% of teenagers said they become sexualized too soon. And if you were on our call the other week, you would have heard that our kids told us that they started seeing things in sixth grade. And so being aware of that, right? Is it aligned with your values? And if it doesn't as a family, then having that conversation. Not enough personal privacy overall. Exposed to sexual predators. All of us want to believe it's not our child. And that's actually the first thing. And then you can see on and on, being bullied virtually, right? As parents, as we regulate our young folks, we actually give them permission to not have to engage with social media platforms and gamings to decompress them, even if they don't know it's best for themselves. And so Franklin and I have put together a list for you all. Many people ask us, well, how do you start these conversations with your kids? And so here are some questions we ask our kids. You can take any one of these and create your own of how to start this conversation with young folks. You can ask them, what platforms do you use and connect to your friends? Kind of like, hey, hey, Jessica, what's your favorite platforms? Like, what are you doing on social media now? And as they tell you, you think you listen to it and you go ahead and put it on your phone or learn it or ask them more. Ask your question, have online social groups helped you during the pandemic? What we found is sometimes we are not talking to children enough about their experience in the pandemic and how social media and platforms have impacted them. They have a lot to say. And you know what? They are so wise. They actually understand some of this, the psychological process and the grooming better than we do. Even the littles. So my youngest son, who's 11, he says, mommy, do you know which kids are the, the rage the most or the most wild or hard to deal with on um, 
Uh, Fortnite, not Fortnite. What's the other one with the little building blocks? It's the ugliest little game I think ever. Minecraft. Thank you. I said, what? Well, he said, it's the elementary school kids. He said, they're cussing in the room. They're screaming. And I'm like, really? He's like, I cannot play with them. He's in middle school. He thinks he's really grown, right? So that question is for all of our babies. What do you do when someone is too old and tries to communicate with you? You can ask your kid, hey, do you have some new friends that you interact with that don't go to your school? That's how I do it. And as they say, yes, you question it. You, you can do further questioning. What do you do when you hear toxic talk in a chat, right? Some of your kids will say, I'm the one who makes everything okay. Some kids will be like, that never happens. If your kid tells you that never happens, investigate that more. <laughs> it happens, right? And then one of the things we do ask with our kids is have you seen weapons or dealt with other social issues that maybe we weren't ready for our kids to be exposed to? Or we decide, I wanna teach you about this before social media or, or games teach you about this. And so as we ask those questions, it's very sad, but a lot of our kids who are on certain things at a young age where there are chat rooms or where there are people who are able to verbally communicate with them are being exposed to social things that we may not yet be ready for. And so we should ask them, do, what do you do when you're stressed? And let your kid tell you, if they say, well, when I'm stressed, I go to my games or I start texting my friends. If that's the only thing they say, then that's a real good yellow flag for us as parents and guardians to say, how do I get them outside more? How do I teach them other ways to de-stress besides this? They're just giving their honest thing, but that's a good way for us to gauge their need. And then last, what rules should we make about behavior and conversation online? In our family, we decided to make this a family project. We ask our kids, what do they think we should do? And they actually tell us, give us boundaries, take our phones away a certain time. And the high schooler, if you have older siblings or cousins, can also be very clear to tell you what some of the younger kids need because they are also still trying to protect them. And so make this a family conversation, make it an ongoing process. And let us also remember it starts with us in regards to how we're allowing it to impact our life. And some of us allow it to impact our life by acting like it's not impacting our kids. Yeah. Any comments or thoughts, my friends? What's coming up for you? Is this helping in any way? Ow, ow, ow. I hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, the chat box. It's definitely helpful. I wish I didn't miss the first 30 minutes last time on this one, because I missed some of what you were saying. The older kids said about, you know, what, what the little ones were, were doing online. I mean, I have some awareness because I'm very aware and I stay on top of them, but this is definitely helpful as they grow to have this, have this knowledge. So thank you. You're welcome. And what we may do, I'll talk to James is maybe we'll bring back another segment of this where we'll actually bring some of the things the kids said and some of the sites they talked about specifically to share with you all. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Anyone else? What's coming up for you? What can you implement at home? I just think it's great your wisdom about making it conversational and having the kids be part of figuring out what the boundaries need to be because they often they do know and um, I think it's such a hot button topic for them that if we try to come in hard and lay down the law and say this is how it's going to be then um, it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I know every like every house has their own rules, but with the hard thing is like when you say something like, you know, to stay off forever, but then you go out in public, for example, um, last week I went to the park with my daughter and my nephews and my sister, and there was literally like four adults just sitting there all looking down, you know, on their cell phones and not even paying attention. it's like, 
you know, where's your kids running around, you know, and, you know, anything could happen. So it's always hard, you know, to kind of relate to not doing this, but then you go out in public and see the same thing going on. And there's parents there and not even, you know, it's like, to me, if you're going out to be out there with your kids in the park or whatever, you should get involved with that instead of just sitting there being on your phone. So it's kind of hard to be like, no, don't get on your, you know, don't, don't get on your phone. And then for me, it's like, you know, I'll be on my computer looking at stuff, whatever. And then I go to bed and it's like, just the reaction of just like picking up my phone then and continuing, you know, looking at whatever, you know, so it's always hard to trying to figure out how to tell them something not to do if you're doing it. Right. Thank you, Monica, for that honesty. And that's why we started with what's your relationship to social media and even your smartphone, right? Because I can't control some of the things my children see outside of me in public, but the greatest teacher to my children and my niece is actually me. And so some of the things I have found like in that situation, Monica, where we can use that as a moment to tell her kids, hey, you see all the adults are on their phone too. And, and they'll be like, yeah, I'd be like, you know, I don't know why, but I think us as adults need to work on this too. And sometimes just admitting to our kids that we also don't have it all together is what they actually need to hear as well. And so the first step of this is us assessing ourselves and are our behaviors healthy? And are we in one way or another sharing healthy behaviors with our children and then changing those behaviors for ourselves? Now, here's the thing, my friends, this has been a stressful two or three years. Anybody else there? <laughs> Go on already. It's right. So it's okay. Be kind to yourself. Some of us are doing what we could do to make it through. And sometimes this is the best therapist watching a good Betty White joke or something, right? And so it's okay. But moving forward, what can we do to make it a little bit better for our whole family? Well, you all, there's so much we can do. And James and I are trying to figure out in the spring how to create places where we can come together in person and have more of these conversations, even virtually, and just spend time with each other. I hope there's something tonight that you could take away and try with yourself or at home. Um, I'd love for you, as we do the raffle, to put in the chat box, um, is there something that you got out of this, something you will try so that we can also just kind of look at that or something you will add. I want to note that next week on the, is it the 15th, the 16th, we are doing the African American um, Families and Friends platform. I want to invite everyone, we're going to do kind of African American um, Month presentation and celebration for Black History Month. And so please feel free to, to log, log on there. We're gonna do a game. I'm not gonna tell, I'll tell you guys cause you're here around things where you will do a scavenger um, hunt in your house for things that were invented or influenced by African-Americans. So we're gonna make it really fun and interactive with prizes. And so feel free to come out as we celebrate Black History Month which is actually American History Month. Um, and so as I do the raffle, let me go ahead, James. I'm. I'm, lo I'm looking on the deck real quick to see if the survey is there. Um, and so let me go ahead and let you all know who the winners are of the raffle. And what you will do is that you will go ahead and in the chat box, give me your first and last name. You will then also go ahead and give me your email address that is not a school district email as well as you will go ahead and give me your, um, your phone number, all right? Before we do that, I am dropping in the chat box. Thank you for your patience in my multitasking tonight. I am dropping in the chat box a survey. We would love for you to use this survey to um, go ahead and take a moment to fill it out. It is very important to us because it allows us to make sure that we are supporting you all or at least hearing from you. And so in the chat box right now, go ahead, I'm dropping it into everyone. Open it up while I go ahead and let you all know. You can open it up on your cell phones. Um, you don't have to worry about seeing me. You could just fill it out and you also don't have to stay online to fill it out. All right, 
All right, Are, is the link opening for folks? Go ahead and let me know and we'll move on. Great, are you able to open the link? Thank you so much, my friends. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, our three winners randomly are tonight, Emily, Linda, and Monica Corona. Emily, Linda, and Monica Corona. Woo, woo, woo. Please give us your email, your phone numbers, and your first and last name. And there is an announcement. Marisol, do you, in the chat box, if you want to announce it or I will. Um, thank you so much for the pleasure to attend. At Wilson, we are commem commemorating Black History Month with decorations and some ce celebrities. Who's coming? Yay! Thank you for letting us know that if your school is doing something special, please also put it in the chat box. And if we can attend, we will. Go ahead, Marisa, I see you, my friend. Did you wanna say something? Chris, I see your hand raised. Is there a way I can support you? You need something? Great. You all, thank you so much for being here tonight. Please take care of yourself. How about we make a pack that tonight we'll put our phones down. Let's just start there together, just together right here. I am going to, oh, I don't want to lie. So let me make sure I think of it. <laughs> okay. At 930, I'm going to turn my phone face down away from my bed and charge it. And I will not pick it up till the morning. Anyone willing to go in with me on this challenge? 930. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you, Monica. All right, you're not alone. And let's see what type of response we have, but we'll do it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lillian, you missed the first half. I'm so sorry, my friend. We're glad you're here. It is recorded and this will be on the um, school district website. Is that right, James? In a week or so? Yeah, it'll be up uh, by Monday. Oh, good, it'll be up by Monday. Mm -hmm. And just so you all know, all the other ones from this um, workshop series are actually on the site as well. So my friend, um, where are you? Denise, 